Hey guys! So today I'm going to show you how to sew uh, my Miu panties as a little pug. So in the pattern instructions, it'll show you how to sew a really simple kitty ear pair and um, a bunny pair. But here I'm going to show you how I make them into um, a really cute pair of pug undies. And I'm gonna, um, I will have on my website a template for the little muzzle and ear patterns as well. So you'll be able to download those for free there. It's an add-on for anyone who's already bought the Miu panties pattern. Um, I hope to do a few of these in the future. They are really fun. It's kind of something outside of my normal um, underwear sewing repertoire. So it's been really fun to experiment. So if there's any animals that you want to see, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can do a tutorial um, in the future. So I'm going to walk you through how to do the front. Again, you can download the templates for the ears and the muzzle on my website. Um, so I've just cut out my front upper and my front lower out of contrasting fabric. I've cut my muzzle out of a third fabric, so in this case a darker grey linen. And for the ears, I've used a dark gray linen and a floral fabric. So I'm using um, two different colors for the ears. So I'm actually going to start with the ears. So I'm going to put them right sides together. And using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm just going to really quickly stitch around the edges. tack at the beginning and the end. So there's my first one. I'm going to do the second one the exact same. So around these tight corners it's sometimes helpful to stop with your needle down into the fabric and lift your presser foot so that you can pivot. You don't want to pivot too sharply to get a really sharp um, corner, but um, you can kind of start to curve around that way. Okay, so I've done both of my ears now. I'm going to um, notch around this curved area so that it will turn right side out nicely. So I'm just going to really quickly do that and just be careful to not clip into your stitches. If you do happen to clip into your stitches, just go back over and do a couple other stitches in to secure it. I'm also going to kind of um, trim back that seam allowance a little bit. There. Same thing on the opposite side. I've clipped around the outsides of these and I'm going to turn them right side out. It's kind of tricky and if you've made the bunny pair you'll know that it is really tricky to turn those little tiny ears inside out. So what I often do is I'll take um, a pen or a pair of dull tipped scissors to kind of stick in there and help push it right side out. In fact, I often just kind of pull it around that stitching line to kind of turn everything out nice and sharp. So there's our first ear. I'm going to do the same thing to the other ear. And if you're working with a natural fabric, um, like cotton or linen, like which is what I'm working with, uh, it's a lot easier to manage. They tend to just crease as you press them with your finger even. Okay, so I'm just going to run over to my iron. So I've pressed my little ears and I've actually um, just creased them. I folded them down and then creased them like a pug's ear is. Um, and now I'm going to place them on the lower, uh, on the lower front, sorry. And I'm just gonna pin them in place. At this point you might want to just kind of flip them up and see how they're going to 
sit to make sure they're on the face where you would like them. So I'm pretty happy with where they are. And now I'm going to just baste them on. So now that our ears are attached and they're the way that we want them, we can sew the upper front on. So I put the right sides together and I'm going to sew along this curved seam. Um, I would recommend pinning here, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and do it without pinning. If you're having a lot of problems with this seam, because it is bias cut, the pieces tend to stretch. There's a couple of things you can do. You can stay stitch, which is running a row of stitching along the edge of either piece, especially the upper piece, and that will stop things from stretching out too much. Um, and also using a lot of pins. But the flannel and linen, linen that I'm working with, they tend to be pretty stable, even on the bias, so they're really easy to put together. Okay, so I'm just going to check out how this is looking. So there are my little ears, and when I fold them down, they're going to look like that, which looks like a pug to me. Okay, I'm just going to serge that seam very quickly. So I've sewn this uh, front seam and I've surged my seam allowance and then pressed it down. Um, don't worry if your ear creases are not laying flat. We're going to just tack that down by hand once we're all done. So the next step is to apply the muzzle. And I just eyeball it so it looks about where it should be. So pugs have these big noses that sit high up on their heads, so that looks about right to me. And I'm going to switch my sewing machine to a really tight zigzag stitch, and I'm just going to zigzag stitch around the outside, but the first thing I am going to do is I am going to pin this. So just a couple pins. You could also use um, like a fusible adhesive to stick this area together. So my zigzag stitch is just running over the edge of my muzzle piece. To give a shout out to Sonia from Ginger Makes because um, she was the one who gave me the amazing idea to make pug underwear which I can't believe I didn't come up with it myself because I have a pug who I'm obsessed with um, but for some reason I didn't think of it so thank you Sonia So my stitching here is not exactly perfect, but it's good enough for now. There we go. It's starting to look like an animal now. Um, the next thing I do is I have a little button. I'm going to sew that on by hand for a nose. And I'm just going to tack down those ears so that they stay in place just with a regular needle and thread. Okay, so I'm going to just start by tacking the ears down. So I just fold it, and then I just do a little, a couple little stitches, just through, making sure I'm not going through to the other side of the ear. I just want to catch that lining. There we go. So 
there's the first ear tacked down. If you're looking to buy really cute animal undies, um, Knicker Rocker on, she has an Etsy shop. Um, that's how I first found her. She's kind of um, an old school Etsy lingerie maker. She's been around longer than I have. Um, she does amazing uh, animal underwear. I can't even imagine the amount of work she puts into them all. So this is not something that I'm going to be offering in my shop, though if you really want a pair, you can always message me and I might make you a pair custom. Um, but I highly recommend checking out Knicker Rocker for a really cute um, animal themed and other kind of fun printed undies. So there, I've just kind of tacked down those ears. And then I'll hand sew on my button nose. And if you want, you can add a little bow to the ear like I did on my original pair. Or you can leave it plain. So the rest of the, um, the rest of the construction is all outlined in the pattern. If you have any, con um, if you have any questions about how the gusset gets sewn, because that is the most complicated part of this pattern, I have another video on how to sew the Jane panties and the construction of the gusset and the leg and waist elastic is pretty much the same. So those are really great videos um, to check out if you've got any questions about the rest. And I hope you enjoyed this little pattern hack for the Miu panties. Thanks. Bye.